Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dauphin, my 2D RPG about a marine biologist trying to save the ocean and its inhabitants. It is Wednesday morning, bright and early before a busy day of work, and I'm excited to kick off this episode where I'll be working on one of the most important milestones in Dauphin's two years of development. Dauphin is a game where you explore an effectively open world, both above sea level, on islands you can freely sail between, and below the surface as you can dive down anywhere the water is deep enough. As you explore these various environments and biomes, you encounter corruption that is quickly spreading and turning healthy organisms into something much more sinister. Your goal is to combat this corruption, restoring health to these organisms and balance to the environment. In Dauphin's current state of development, you can fight that corruption. For about the past year and a half, the player has been able to equip an item called the Bronze Sword, which they can swing in an arc in front of them and remove a static amount of corruption from corrupted organisms. This existing mechanic has been the source of what I honestly think is the most common and consistent comment I receive on every devlog I share. This guy says he's making a game about saving these creatures, but all you do is run around smacking them with a sword. That doesn't make any sense. All the folks who have commented this are totally correct. I don't envision brute force as the cure to save these organisms from corruption, and I never really have. The bronze sword has just been a very useful placeholder to me as I've built out mechanics like collisions between corruption and anti-corruption forces, triggering events like XP gains and research log entries when corruption is removed from an organism, and just giving me an overall feel for what it's like to build basic combat. This week marks the start of the Combat V2 milestone and the departure of that bronze sword. The plan is to overhaul Dauphin's combat to make it both more fun and engaging and hopefully much more thematically relevant to the lore of the game. The first step in this milestone is going to be creating some new animations for the player. The current weapon swinging animation is really bare bones and pretty bland. I'd love to be a bit more intentional here with a few of these frames to kind of provide a wind up and a rebalancing after the swing, and maybe even add a swing to the left and a swing to the right so that these attacks can be kind of weaved together. I'm hoping that'll make more sense soon. And just to make things extra challenging, I need to create animations for both above water and undersea exploration. For reference, I'll be attempting to follow advice presented in Adam C. Eunice's Pixel Art Class Attack Animations video. Adam is tremendously talented and a very gifted teacher, so if you have not checked out his channel yet, I highly recommend it. I'll leave a link to this video down in the description. Alright, I reckon I have about an hour or so before work to get started here, so time for more coffee and some pixel art. Hey everyone, it is now Friday morning just before work and I want to give you a quick update on the state of these animations, both so that you can just see how I'm progressing and also to give you an idea of where my head is at regarding these new combat interactions. So we're here in A-Sprite looking at frame 133. I've been working on this frame and all the ones following it in the past few days. So I'll just show you what some of these animations are looking like. In this first animation, you'll see the player is facing down kind of towards the camera and what I'm working on is the player being able to swing both back and forth instead of in just one direction. So hopefully you can see what that means here. As we step through these frames, the player is swinging that arm right to left. When we get to the end of that animation, he will raise his arm and swing it back left to right. So this is kind of the more fluid combat style that I want to introduce with this new system. If we continue through these frames here, you can see that we again swing to the right and back to the left to the right and to the left and to the right and to the left. And I laugh here because I really struggle with some of these frames where I have to kind of show the player's arm wrapping around their torso. Pixel art has always been a challenge and this has been no exception. Some of these frames will definitely need tweaking, but overall I'm pretty happy with where this has landed for a first effort. The next step is going to be to create basically the same exact set of animations for when the player is battling corruption underwater, which will present its own unique set of challenges, I'm sure. Anyway, once that's all done, we will catch back up and talk about what exactly it is that the player is swinging, and that's going to be the fun part, so I'll see y'all soon. Hey everyone, welcome back to Monday Morning. I know we skipped right over the weekend where I'd hoped to provide a few updates, but I ended up just being super heads down both with projects around the house and finishing up these new animations for the player, and outside of that, I just gave myself some time to unwind. The good news is that these animations are wrapped up, at least for now, and they're all loaded up into my animation players in the engine. The next step will be to update the animation state machine to account for these new animations and finally update the code in the player's attack state to allow for the new swinging mechanics. 
That's what I'll be jumping into this morning, but first I want to briefly chat about what the player's going to be swinging in lieu of a sword or other melee instrument. As people have commented on this topic over the months and years, I've heard a lot of interesting suggestions from things like slinging healing powders and solutions to not even having combat at all and having other gameplay elements indirectly help cleanse the environment. I have considered all these options and put a lot of thought into this, and what I've landed on is I hope a good mix of lore friendly and really just the mechanics I've always wanted to build in my ideal game. My answer for this mechanic is, for lack of a better term, magic, which I know is very broad and might seem like the easy way out, but I think it can be a great fit here. The corruption we already see in Dauphin is inherently magical itself, even if some of its sources may not be. It changes the appearance and behavior of organisms in the world that it affects and grants them dangerous new abilities that allow them to spread corruption to other creatures more quickly. To me, this doesn't feel like the type of affliction that can be cured with some dawn and a scrubbing brush. Instead, through their initial exposure to corruption, I want the player to discover their own ability to suppress it and to help suppress the corruption in other creatures nearby. And to be clear, this isn't going to be your typical fire, ice, or lightning magic. It's going to be something new that I create for Dauphin's marine setting, which I think is going to be a lot of fun. For me, the biggest advantage of utilizing magic for Dauphin's combat is the flexibility that comes with it. I can create basically any attack I dream up, just like the area attack I created recently for the jellyfish. Some could be more melee oriented, while others could be ranged, charged, area of effect, or more, or a combination of all those. On top of this, I can also be as creative as I want with weapon design. At the end of the day, my takeaway is that implementing a magic-based combat system will give me tons of flexibility to be creative and ultimately reward the player with more choice and variety when it comes to discovering cool new weapons and attacks, and I dig all that. With that, I think I've talked more than enough this morning. I'd love to hear what you think about all that down in the comments, especially if you have ideas for the marine elements I can use to categorize this magic. For now, time to get some animations hooked up and possibly create our first new magical weapon for Dauphin. Some of you have probably noticed that since the last devlog, some parts of my desk setup have changed. New desk mat, new monitor, and new keyboard. And whenever I get a new keyboard, I always see a bunch of comments asking about it, so I'll get out ahead of that this time. I have migrated from the iQnix A80 to the new iQnix F97. The transition from an 80% layout to a 96% compact layout is one that I've been looking to make for a while, primarily for use of the number pad. I still have all my favorite features here from the A80, a 2.4 GHz wireless USB connection that I've found far more reliable than Bluetooth and a great fit for my USB switch setup, and I can switch between Windows and Mac layouts for work with a keyboard shortcut. I have TTC silver switches on this board which are hot swappable, but honestly between these switches and the surprisingly heavy aluminum case and overall nice build quality, I think this is probably the nicest sounding out of the box keyboard I've owned. It's a premium keyboard at a premium price for sure. I was eager to pick up this board when it came out, but ended up actually reaching out to iQnix to see if they'd be willing to partner. I'm stoked that they ended up sending me this board along with the Coral keycap set you see here and providing a discount URL for the channel. So if you're in the market, you can use the updated link in my gear list in the description and get 5% off and help out the channel. All right, folks, welcome back to a beautiful Wednesday morning when I'm finally ready to share the first exciting progress of the devlog. Here in the engine, we're looking at Dauphin's first proper implement for removing corruption from organisms. This is the Coral Wand, and the player is going to swing it in his hand just as he did the sword, but of course we're going to be using the new animations, and instead of this being kind of a blunt force instrument, every time the player swings this wand, it's going to spawn one of these magic effects that we just talked about. I've not yet created that magical effect, but what I have done is bring the Coral Wand into the game as a lootable and usable object and finally hooked up all my new animation stuff to the player's attack state. This all comes together when we finally use the wand from our item bar. As you can see, the player swings it from left to right across his body, and when he does so, he actually kind of lunges in the direction of the mouse. I really like this as a combat mechanic. I think it feels much more fluid to kind of be moving as you're attacking, and I just pulled this from other games that I enjoy. Apart from that, when we swing it more than once in quick succession, we don't just swing it from left to right. Instead, we'll kind of chain these swings back and forth. And this is really the bread and butter of those animations I've been working on over the past few days. From the viewer's perspective, I'm guessing this might not look like a change that was worth the probably 15 hours I put into these new animations over the past week. However, I really can't describe the excitement I felt once I finally got everything hooked up here. Even without the magic attack, it feels so much more engaging to use a combat item with both the chained swings and the subtle lunge movement. I'm really encouraged by this. 
I was also pleased with how simple it was to implement that swing left and swing right mechanic as opposed to just swinging the same direction every time. Here in my attack state, what we really used to do was just enter the state, play the single attack animation. When that animation was done, we would exit the state and prepare to enter it again if the player used the attack input. Now you can see we support two animations, attacking from right to left and attacking from left to right. And we have a little flag down here to keep track of which animation we're currently performing. In order to switch between them correctly, we make use of two timers up here in the hierarchy. The total attack timer represents the amount of time it takes for the full animation to complete. The mandatory attack timer is the time it takes from the beginning of the animation to the final frame. So what that means is there is a period of time in between the change to the final frame of the animation and the formal end of the animation. In this time between these two timers is when we're able to basically interrupt that animation and perform a new action. We can see this in practice back here on the beach. If we swing the coral wand from left to right and don't provide any further inputs, you'll see that there's kind of a delay as the player holds the wand out to the right side of his body. Instead, if we decide to provide another input between the change to that last frame and the end of that little delay there, that's where we will trigger the swing back from right to left. So there's just a little bit of time there where we can kind of chain attacks together and honestly have just a much more engaging way to use this item. I am really excited with how this is coming together and can't wait to get the magical attack in there as the cherry on top. For now, off to work, but we will catch up soon for probably the final update of the devlog. Alright, welcome back everyone to Friday morning. Over the past two days I've been working on the first magical attack to accompany the Coral Wand and as of this morning I finally have it hooked up. First here's the animation for the new attack in A Sprites. As you can see it's three frames and very simple and hopefully by looking at these frames you can understand kind of what I'm going for here. Really just a replacement melee attack where we have this kind of slash from side to side. The idea here is that I'll be able to mirror this on the X axis and swipe it in the other direction when the player kind of changed those attacks together. So nothing too crazy here, no projectiles yet, just a replacement kind of elemental attack that kind of matches the color scheme of the Coral Wand. Here in the engine, we can jump into the script for the Coral Wand to see how we're going to actually be using this attack. The Coral Wand extends my tool class, which is used for all different types of tools, ultimately weapons like this and fishing and gathering tools. And all of these tools implement two functions, use primary and use secondary, meaning that there's kind of two ways you can hopefully use each of these tools. The primary use of the Coral Wand is going to be to create the slash attack. So that's exactly what we're doing here. We're spawning an instance of the new slash attack, which we'll look at in just a second. And based on the mouse position in relation to the player, we're kind of doing the same thing that a blend space 2D does to figure out which direction we want to actually create this animation. The Coral Slash attack itself is very simple. It's basically just a sprite and anti-corruption node, which is my node that automatically removes corruption from corrupted sources when the two collide, and an animation player to control those two things. So here in the animation player, you can see that I just have one animation that automatically plays when this object is ready, and it does two things. It of course changes the frame of the sprite as we step through, but it also changes the shape of the anti-corruption's collision shape 2D, and specifically, we're changing the position and the radius and the height to kind of follow the shape of the attack as we progress through the frames. So here in game we can finally see how this all comes together. I have the coral wand selected down here in my item bar and when I left click we will swing the wand and spawn one of those attacks. You'll notice that it moved from right to left much like the player's swing and if we start to chain those attacks together we will flip the attack on the x-axis so that it actually kind of follows the movement of the player's arm. This is kind of what I had in mind all along, and although it's not perfect and probably needs a little bit of tweaking, I'm really happy with how this looks so far. With new animations in place and a precedent set for creating new magical attacks, I think we're off to a great start with a really impactful overhaul to Dolphin's combat system. The next devlog should be pretty interesting as we begin to adapt this system for use as the player is exploring underwater. As always, I want to give a huge shout out to all the folks supporting this channel and Dolphin's development on Patreon. Grammy supporters this month are Cody Odin, Finnick Foo Games, Mega Ombre, James Kennedy, Jess Sargo, Binary Chef, Elena, Dan, and Kyle Van Riper. Beta supporters are Avant, Vlad Sunny, 
Deluse, Happy Hippie, and Stein Dusseldorp. Hope you enjoyed the video. Stay safe, and hopefully I'll see you in the next episode.